Hey everyone, welcome to a Render Spaz Tips 02. Here we're going to talk about using masks and object IDs to uh, get some paint changing um, colors and also just looking at that we can make adjustments in Photoshop or in After Effects or whatever um, post production pro uh, software that you use. Uh, you'll be able to make some changes, and these are just uh, this is just one kind of quick step to show you guys that you can uh, you can do a lot of um, uh, front end changes here in uh, in V-Ray or or whatever render software you're using. Um, you can use it uh, use the passes to start um, tweaking the effects after, so you don't have to re-render all the time. So if you wanted to change the color of the car, say for like a blue or a uh, yellow or anything like that, uh, we can change it with the object IDs or even using masks. Uh, and I'm going to show you right now how you go about that. All right, so right now I have a rendered image from the studio kit. Um, I've, what I've done was just change the black car out to the red car. And um, now what we're going to do is we're just going to uh, set up our object IDs. So to do this, um, what you want to do, so, so move this aside, is uh, you want to select, so say I want to um, change the paint of the car, I would select the body, okay, uh, I'll just come over here, grab this guy, okay, and then from there, once I have the body selected, anything that I want changed, well, which would be the red in this instance, um, what I would do now is right click, go over to object properties, and from there we're looking at object ID okay you'll see it here it says G buffer object ID is zero you can set it to one okay so if you do that now <clears throat> everything here all this selected objects are selected as one as object ID one so this will give it an, uh, a solid color okay uh, so when it renders out you'll get a pass with the solid color what could be a blue or yellow whatever it is so that's the way you can use it to select in in uh, Photoshop okay as a as a whole so from there uh, if you would select on the rim, say, or the tire, you can ob object ID the tire if you wanted to, or even the rim, and break that down. Uh, you can go to object properties, and you can see it's a zero. So if I wanted it to be a three, anything with a three would have this certain color. Uh, it could be a yellow or whatever. So I just, uh, you know, keep that in mind. Okay, so now once uh, you have the body selected, we're not going to be doing the tire in this. Uh, video, but um, once you have the um, body selected and you have it ID'd, so what you're going to want to do is you want to go over to rendering. On that tab, you get render setup, and we're looking at render elements. And under the render elements, we're going to see uh, add, okay? And this is our list that we're going to get so that we can grab and export out different kinds of element passes, okay, of the rendering, of the render that we have. So. I want to use multi mat element, and it's one of the popular ones nowadays for uh, V-Ray, and hopefully, I think the newer V-Ray versions do have multi mat. I don't know if the older ones do. Um, the other one would be Object ID, but with some um, anti-aliasing uh, issues, um, I've been going with the multi mat. It's been working really well. So we're going to use multi mat element. Once we have that selected, uh, make sure you have. If you don't, if you're not using frame buffer, make sure you just everything is enabled here. You got that checked and then your outputs, wherever you want to output your uh, final result, uh, you output it here, okay? But because I rendered um, the image out in frame buffer, I have a selection up here in the multi mat element uh, dropdown, okay? And you also have the alpha, which I don't have alpha for this image, but um, you can see like, so as you uh, begin to put more V-Ray elements in, you will start getting the options down below here in this dropdown list. So here's our multi mat element. And within this, uh, you can see we have a, a reddish color here. Um, and it will just have some kind of a random color that it should assign. Um, and it, like I said, if we had the tire selected, it would be like a yellow or a blue because of the ID, uh, changing the ID. Like if we add it to ID3, this tire would have been a different color. But all right, so now in Photoshop, I have opened up both images. Okay, I got the multi element and the color of the SLS. And what I want to do with this is change the color of the paint. Okay? Um, so how I want to go about this is going over to our SLS color. All right, first I want to make sure that it's, uh, I'm going to change the layer 
We get a layer from the background. And then I want to duplicate this layer. Okay. Just like that. And then what we want to do is we want to create a mask layer. Okay, that's going to go beside it and be linked just by clicking the bottom here. And then from there, once this is selected, we go over to image on the top here, we're going to want to apply the image. And that's going to be our SLS multi image down here in this drop down source. From there, we're going to hit OK. And you can see now we have a gray, looks like a gray, a gray mask, okay? Goes above. So let's go over to our adjustments tab and we want to go over to hue and saturation. So let's click on that and we'll get a hue and saturation layer. And from there we want to use this little drop down and now we'll link it to our mask, okay? That gray mask. Now we have the options to change the color, okay, of hue and saturation to any color that we like. And this is a really cool, fast way to get different colors of your car or, your, or whatever it is that you want to use um, so you don't have to re-render. So if you want a bunch of different colors, um, you can use this technique. You can also hit the colorize, and that helps you as well. All right. And that's just by using the masks, the IDs. Also with, with the IDs you can do is you can always come over to them and um, you can mark you select them. Uh, sorry, using the wand. Okay, you can select parts and make sure your feathering is correct. All right, your feather has to be at a, uh, at a good uh, pixel length. And uh, also, you can select by color range. So if you go to your marquee selecting, you right click color range, you can actually pick the red and you can now get, um, you can change the fuzziness a bit, hit OK and it will select everything in the red. You want to make sure that you have everything selected. Sometimes it will miss pieces, so just play with those settings and that will get you uh, everything selected. But if you're a Photoshop whiz, then uh, you'll understand this clearly. But um, just showing you how I did the mask for um, for the body color. Uh, it's a pretty cool technique, and uh, you can use this uh, for a lot of different things. So that pretty much concludes this video, and I hope you learned something from this, and now you can apply it in your own uh, three renderings. So, yeah, guys, that concludes it, and um, we'll see you soon again. And stay tuned for more products. Uh, check out the site, because I'm always updating it at www.renderspaz.com. Catch you guys later.